Hello friends, I am back with my series of SIP, the story of impressive person, where I do invite some impressive persons, some legends who can guide us, who can give, who can show us the path of progress. This show is about knowing, understanding and learning, improving, improvising and getting motivations and trying to move on the footsteps of legends. Legends are a person who can understand the difference between a dream and the aim. To have a dream, you need sound sleep to see, but to accomplish any aim, you need to give sleepless efforts. Today, I am very lucky. I have very special, very, very special, honorable, respected SR City, sir, who is the epitome of knowledge, skill management, passion, and compassion. That is unmatched quality CS. Above all, who has been instrumental in the growth of power sector of Delhi and restructuring of the power sector of Delhi also. Before I invite that legend, I want to give a brief introduction. He started his career after passing BSc Electrical Engineering from Punjab Engineering College Chandigarh in 1996. He took training of six months in Desu and he was then appointed as assistant engineer in Desu and he started working in the planning department for EHV system. He was responsible for election, operation, maintenance of 220 kV substation Parpadgan, Maroli and Okla. After that, he got transferred to gas turbine projects, 6 into 30 megahertz gas turbine. He was heading the conversion of combined cycle power by adding steam turbine to that existing GT. He became chief engineer projects including model distribution zone in Nehru Place. He was uh, responsible for restructuring of power sector in Delhi. He worked as a chief engineer commercial, chief engineer distribution East Delhi and he worked as a member technical in transmission distribution of Delhi Vidyut Board. Then he got a chance to become director of operation of DTL, Delhi Transco Limited. He also worked as an advisor to government of Delhi, power transmission for Commonwealth Games. He was a member of DRC, Delhi Electricity Regulatory Commission also. And uh, he was advisor to Pet U University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. He worked on behalf of Government of India and consultant to Government of Afghanistan for transmission projects. Also for that construction supervision work in Bhutan. He has got training in Japan. He has got training in France for gas turbine. Now invite, time to invite that legends SR City, sir. Welcome to the show, sir. Namaskar. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh, for all the kind words. Uh, I started my career in Delhi with the, then Desu in 1967. And thereafter, I was posted in planning department and worked there for the development of the 33 kV and 220 kV grid, grid system of Delhi which was nascent at that time. There was no 220 kV grid of uh, Delhi of its own. And uh, the four stations were planned and executed. That is Narila, Patpadga, Meroli and Najafgarh. Apart from that, the interconnecting 33 kV grid stations from these uh, 220 kV grid stations were also planned in-house. The system studies were carried out with the help of Central Lake City Authority as well as with the help of NRLDC. That time it was NREV. <clears throat> After doing that, we started uh, implementing the project and I was transferred to for erection, construction, operation and maintenance of the grid stations. The first station we built was Narela, followed by Patpadgan, followed by Maroli and Najafgarh. The experience gained for the planning was absolutely very very essential for everyone in the parts in the power sector so that they know the holistically how the systems are planned and how the planning is carried out thereafter what i learned in six seven years in the planning department when i started working in the field one or two year experience was far more practical than what we learned in the planning department but planning experience came very handy for the making the cable schedules and other protection schemes and everything. And that, that is the one which gives you the insight of the all the system works and how the system is protected. And this is a very, very critical phase for everyone because if you work in the planning, then you get a holistic view for the future of the power system. 
then in 1985 i was transferred to gas turbine power station which was uh, the first power station in the country and it was uh, to be developed for the providing uninterrupted power supply to rashtrapati bhavan and central government offices and the residence of prime minister and important installations including all india radio etc this was a very very challenging project which uh, was unique in its unique in many uh, aspects this was built on a ashfield area which was almost 4 meter deep ashfield ash falls from the ip station and uh, the plant was to be operated on naphtha fuel which is uh, which is very very volatile and its initial boiling point is 23 degree so the challenge was that we have to build up six gas turbines of 30 megawatt of uh, g design the project was executed on turnkey basis by elstom of france and it had about 22 bay of 66 kv switch chart which was convertible from 33 to 66 it took precisely 360 days for for all the six gas turbines to be functional as well as the switch yard and the the piling was necessary because ashfield area the turbine the foundation had to be on piles and so was the transformer foundation including the foundation of the breaker and other things in the switch yard had to be on piles which were vibro flotation pile which was very unique you only uh, you, you with the water pressure you make a hole of about 3 meters and dump the stone ballast in that of the size of 6 to 8 inches and thereafter you cover it up with the, this thing and make your uh, foundation on that and that was the most challenging part was that we had to construct four tanks of naphtha with floating roof Ooh. where where the because it can't be open to sky so it goes up and down as well as as per the require as per the fuel which is pumped in and then there was a railway siding to get the fuel from either uh, batra or from uh, any from anywhere where the indian oil could supply or bpcl could supply and that was uh, the gas turbine had the unique facility that it was one push button start Okay. You just give a start command, and it will go up to synchronizing, and you can synchronize either automatically or manually as the case may be. And the loading will be. It took about fifteen minutes to go to the full speed download, and you can synchronize with the grid and start supplying power of thirty megawatt. That was one of the unique and most of the. Uh, this was practically the first. Uh, Gas wine power plant in the country running on naphtha, and, and uh, practically all the other states which followed subsequently, including the NTPC, they all came for training in the power plant for uh, the gas turbine, which was unique or new technology which was coming into Indian right. grid. There were a few uh, such installations which were in, were running on gas and. one was in uttarakhand in uh, madhya pradesh in uh, maharashtra and few more in the fertil uh, fertilizer plants but not in the power sector per se sir after that you were responsible for conversion of uh, that gas turbine into uh, combined cycle yeah. what were the challenges yeah. see the, see it was the layout was uh, suitable they made the layout suitable for waste heat recovery unit but then it was all uh, suitable for the elstom units to come in okay but uh, what we gave was uh, to bhel so there was lot of challenges of coordination space constraint as this thing waste heat recovery unit the exhaust gas is about 560 degree from the gas turbine which will be passed over the waste heat recovery unit and it will generate steam and you can run about uh, with two gas turbine you can run 30 megawatt of a steam turbine so the coordination and was a very very big challenge for layout as well as for operational maintenance especially the coordination of the two separate uh, control systems one was of g make and other one was of abb make so it was a it was a very very challenging job to complete the whole thing and it took much longer time than anticipated because of the you are working on a 
working power station, not in a greenfield Great. power plant. And then we also developed, uh, the, we conceived uh, this uh, Pragati power plant with the two gas turbines of 100 megawatt and one steam turbine. That was still more challenging because we had no land. Okay. The land was only of a 220 kV grid station where we accommodated the gas turbines and the steam turbine. And the unique thing was that we didn't take any fresh water for the power plant. It was the sewerage treated water of the DJB STP, which we used for the, the power plant. And that is how the plant was uh, permitted to be the, it was approved by Delhi, uh, Delhi Pollution Control Committee at that time. And the another unique feature was that the nitrous oxide, which usually go up to 50 to 80 ppm, it had to be restricted to less than 10 ppm. So though it costed uh, much more money, but it was for the climate control and the pollution control, this was very necessary, which was adopted. Great, sir. Uh, now, I would like to know about your role and contribution in the restructuring of power sector of Delhi. You have you have been instrumental in that part. Yeah, we started this project when uh, because when the government of India wanted that the Electricity Act, they had amended already to bring in the regulatory commissions. And Orissa was the first one to go for this one and other states were also going for this one for restructuring. And uh, Government of India was very keen that we should restructure so the efficiencies are brought in. I'll just give you the example because the TNT losses or aggregate of technical and commercial losses in Delhi was to the extent of about 45 to 50 percent. And that means 50 percent of people were not paying and the remaining 50 percent were paying for those not paying or the government had to give the subsidy. So we have first appointed the Administrative Staff College of India, Hyderabad to uh, give the consultancy for this project. And the one thing which we did was that we trained or uh, give training to all the manpower of Delhi, of the inspectors level and JE and above, including accounts, so that they know what are the benefits of the restructuring when it takes place. Okay. That was, that was, and because Delhi was the, and SBI CAP was the consultant. The term aggregate commercial and technical losses was the first time used in the country. Earlier, it used to be TND losses. So, but TND losses in a commercial sense doesn't make any sense because unless you collect the money and put the collection efficiency as a part of the uh, performance parameter, you cannot uh, judge what is good, what is bad. So, that was the SB cap did a very good job, and the transition was so smooth that there was not a single day of strike by the employees because their long-term pensionary benefits and other benefits remained the same and there was an agreement that their service condition cannot be inferior to what they were getting in Delhi with the road at that time. So that was a very big challenge and it was appreciated over a period of time. Now, the losses of uh, Delhi distribution companies are in the range of 7% only, which is one of the best in the country. True, very true. Far better than far better than Bombay and Calcutta, which were privatized long, long ago, which has the history of privatization, both Calcutta and Bombay. Congratulations. And, these, and uh, basically, it was the support of the the government and the chief minister at that time, which made it a success. In fact, the central government, uh, Daw was uh, of uh, the other party BJP and they were also very, very supportive for this to happen because this was a showcase for the whole world, not only India, for the whole world. That And the it was not a sale of the assets. The land and the assets were only, it was the, it, it, land is not transferred to them. It is only the assets for working. They don't own the assets because the it was converted into company so 51% of the company shares were given to the successful bidder who could reduce the losses in a faster trajectory as compared to the other ones in the next five years. And uh, the, then the, these companies are giving dividends to the government without taking any uh, budgetary support or anything. So that's the advantage to hold Delhi. Great, so sir. that was 
Yeah. Now I would like to know about your experiences as a chief engineer, commercial chief engineer, distribution, East Delhi, and the member technical in Delhi with the board. See, after I was uh, transferred to commercial, I still was handling projects. Commercial is a very, very is important aspect for the whole thing because from commercial policy, you generate your revenue. One is the policy, the other one is the field people have to collect that, this thing. The, the One of the most important things which we did in commercial at that time was that we started, put, we developed meters, which was of uh, in Eclolite acro, acro and which was Electrically, ele electrosonically welded. Okay. There was no seal. It was one body, and the it was transparent. The terminal block was such that once you insert the cable, it cannot be reopened. It has to be broken. Oh, the the menens of uh, then the the combination of the linemen and the other staff, or with the consumers, that was broken. And when we replaced those meters in East Delhi, in a housing society, where the losses are about 40-45%, there was a lot of uproar that why are you replacing? The losses came down to 4%. 4%? Just, so just by changing the... Because that's it could be 3%, but 3 to 4% it was varying. But then the similarly, we replaced an end block in the whole colony of uh, Madhuban, where, which was the early officers... Uh, Cooperative society, there the losses were twenty percent plus. It also came down to three four percent. So that was the advantage, right. and which was still a static meter, but uh, not a digital meter. Great, sir. Great. And what was your experience as a member technical for Delhi with the board? The after the the power sector was restructured into three distribution companies. East, East Central, Southwest, and uh, North Northwest, which was which was run by Tata's for the North, and uh, BRPL that is BSCS Rajdhani Limited for the South Southwest, and uh, East was uh, again by BSCS that was BYPL, BSCS Jamna Limited. The Transco was started out as a government company, and the generation was. Uh, given two companies, one was Pragati Power Plant and both was the existing power plants at Indraprastha, Gas Turbine, as well as at Rajhat. Now, the role of Transco became very, very important because that was the coordinating agency with the distribution and generation. And uh, the staff was uh, as it is where it is based. So, the transmission as it is was not uh, having the best of the manpower at that time. So we decided that whenever manpower will recruit, we will go through NTPC for the competitive exam. And every person who comes in has to be from a competitive environment, not by interview or anything. And it was offloaded either to power grid or for NTPC. So DTL distanced itself from the recruitment process. Number two, we sent everybody right from junior engineer onward for training for the respective field and the promotional avenues were also open to those who qualify that training program. For four weeks or six weeks induction training as well as promotion training, you have to go and at the end of your training, this thing, you pass an exam. That was the qualifying requirement for your promotion. Seniority and other things and your confidential reports extra was there, but you ought to update yourself for the requirements of the industry at that particular time. So then, after about two years or so, then we started getting our trained manpower and which they did wonders. And the DTL transmission losses had come down to almost 1%. Great. Which was, states have 3 to 4%. So that was for what we did. And very, very strict quality control division was created, as well as the maintenance practices, which were there, the best in the world, including PGCL, were adopted. And it was maintenance practices were followed in totality. If it is done periodically, one month, three months, six months, it will be implemented. So that's how the uh, Delhi Trasco and the project completion times were reduced, ordering times were reduced, so that we were able to be very, very competitive. Based upon that, 
government of india agreed to you know that all the projects required for the commonwealth games in delhi will be done by dtl not by power grid or anything that was our hallmark great sir great and uh, now time to talk about your role as a member drc kindly share your experience see drc as everybody knows is a quasi judicial body and uh, the all decision we should take are as a judgment not in the file or anything there is a hearing and then you give the judgment and sign and that can be only challenged in appeal or high court if there was a regulation or something like that but technical issues or the tariff issues will be only go to appeal so we we did a very good job and we brought the standard of performance for the first time in uh, the regulatory field that in how much time the meter will be installed how much time the linemen will go and repair your meter replace the meter and there were penalties issued along with that and also that uh, the feature of uh, that uh, how many interruptions are there in a year frequency and duration of interruption cafe and candy which was uh, then ca started implementing and getting data from all over the country for the distribution that is how the distribution companies and their all capex had to be approved which are approved with the total due diligence in the in the planning department of dtl as well as of the regulatory commission we are the director of engineering director of tariff and director of law doing all their respective fields great sir great and now time to talk about you have worked abroad in afghanistan as well as in bhutan as a consultant on behalf of government of india kindly share your experiences yeah. for that you see these are two very typical countries i had gone to japan in 1977 for the uh, training on the transformers which was one the, one of the most developed countries in the world at that time and then coming back from there and going to afghanistan which is primitive which is still remains to be most primitive they don't have a railway network at all even today all a road network and the electricity and the living condition was pathetic the everything was uh, they have no export uh, thing except the dry food nothing else and then it was running all on aid from various countries and the government of india agreed to fund two projects in afghanistan uh, one was a project for the implementation of a hydro power plant and its connected transmission line and the development of the distribution system of uh, kandhar which is another town after kabul and herat so that was a project and uh, me along with uh, our then superintending engineer uh, mr ahuja and mr kaushal they had gone for the different works i had gone for the substation and the protection scheme from the this thing so we were there for 6 month for one month and we continue to work for the whole project for next one to two years for giving a specification and tender documents and but some of their engineers are very brilliant because most of them have studied abroad and uh, these are the projects which uh, and then bhutan was another uh, country which is total pinched in duty and government of india had agreed to fund the 66 kv and 220 kv lines uh, with government funding and chukha was one of the projects where the hydroelectric uh, power which was generated which is also funded by government of india would be purchased by india and the transmission line and the substation for those were also a part of the aid project and the vapcos as the company of the government water and power consultancy services who requested desu or dvb desu at that time to give us the give them the consultants who are who have the technical field and everything and uh, that's how we went and supervised the construction i went and did the supervision and construction of their plants it was another experience there also there is no rail it's very low mountains to high mountains people are very simple but they are hard working at the same time and the whatever food you get is most pure which is more than organic okay wow wow now so, i would like to know about your training in japan and uh, france 
what was your experience during training? See, training for one thing, crossover was at a company called Dahin, which is a, it's a big company that was building up 220 kV and 400 kV crossover at that time. The efficiency, productivity per person was almost 10% of 10 times that of India. There were 70 people building 400 kV, 400 MBA capacity transformers. Similar work being done in BHL, uh, Bhopal in India had 700 people for doing the same job. So the discipline and the way of their working was fantastic and so are the ethics. The factory in which we were working, we were getting training, had no lock on their gate. And there was copper stored in that, which is just a number lock. Anybody who needs to come in, they will have the number and come in. And second thing was cleanliness. Every vehicle which came into the plant had to pass through a waterbed so that the tires don't get dust into the factory area. And Japanese are, have a fetish for their uh, cleanliness as well as for their uh, commitment True. for the best thing in the world. I incidentally asked the general manager of uh, pro production that if we have to change a uh, oil in the field, he says, I'm in this company for 30 years. I have ne never got an occasion to study this problem. That means no, no, no oil ever failed, whatever they have designed. And then when we went to the France for the gas turbines, it is in the same factory they were building up the aircraft engine for a 300 bus, 320 bus. Okay. Airbus. And they were they were having the nuclear uh, generator they were building up to 1000 megawatt. And the insulation of the generator was such, it was epoxy cast and it could be washed with soap and water at that time. Wow. So later on, everybody developed. They were the first one to develop that kind of uh, insulation and the quality of uh, the system. And uh, we learned a lot because the gas turbine is nothing but an aircraft engine, but for industrial use. And it's a totally different technology. When we, I was posted in gas turbine after six months, our then chairman, the general manager, Mr. Kapoor, who later on became the lieutenant governor, came to the plant and he said, he said, you have been to France. Do you, do you know everything about gas turbine? I said, hey, look, when I joined here, I only knew the spellings. No, I'm certain to the extent of 80-85% that whatever problems come, we'll be able to solve it. Wow. wow. On all the, the things. So that was the kind of training which they give. We were there for about three weeks, which also gave the training for the control system, which was speedtronic of the General Electric make, which was very, very interesting training. Otherwise, uh, mechanical people did their mechanical training, but uh, the elect electrical engineers and the control engineers have to know every function of the power plant to able to run it. Great. So that was a, that was fantastic experience. Yeah. Now I would like to know about your family, social life, and the future plans. Very interesting part. Look, by I have a daughter and a son. Okay. Both of them uh, went to your son went uh, in November two thousand and daughter went in. Uh, May 2001. Okay. The daughter was, she was working with a company called AC Nielsen in India. She was transferred to the head office in New York. So she went on that and my son went to do, he had done hotel management and he went there to do his international trade business, MBA in international trade. And uh, thereafter they stayed there and uh, they are citizens, they are married and uh, that's it. And me and my wife, they live here. We visit them almost uh, after he retired from BRC. Then we have been visiting every year. But earlier, I would uh, I had not gone to see them because of in summer when the wife would go, she was a teacher, she would go there. I could I could ask for leave for anyone. In fact, that was the most crucial period of uh, the power system in Delhi. Another thing I will tell you, when I was advisor to government at uh, this 
University of Petroleum Energy Studies, I started the practice of training of the teachers, professors. Oh. They, they have to go to the field from each department so that they learn what is the latest technology, not teach what they learned 20 years or 25 years ago. Good step, very good step. So, so that was the, this thing that changed the course content and the course curriculum based upon the requirement of the industry in the present day. Both for they had a unique course of BTEC power system, not electrical, mechanical, civil, BTEC power system and MBA power management which still they are probably the only one after NPTI mother push, which they stopped there again starting now. So that was a very, very useful again. And we did with conferences on human resource development. That was the focus. That if you have the, for every every endeavor, you require the human resource. And if your human resource is good, if you, if you have to develop a project, you have to first develop your people. If the people are there to implement, everything goes smooth. And what about your future plan? What next? Well, well, look, I am I am now almost how much seventy six. I live my life the way I want on my terms. I do yoga every morning for about 40, 45 minutes, Great. and have a piss walk in the evening for thirty to forty five minutes. And then when I get an opportunity, I'll go and play golf and uh, do what I feel like. I mean, but. My focus still remains. I leave. I I am abreast of what is happening in the bar system. Being a member of the forum of Indian regulators, we get all the information from the regulatory field. Which any anything happening in the country has to ultimately go to the regulatory commission. So all that information is available on daily basis. So that's it. You keep yourself abreast. I read about uh, six newspapers in the morning three economical and three general, but I don't read politics and uh, crime, criminal. Take, take Nothing. It. It's only which enriches your mind, nothing more than that. And if somebody wants any guidance or help, I am always available to them. That's all. The last, but not the least, I need a piece of advice for the youth of India and abroad. How to grow and glow in our life. Kindly give some advices. Look, as simple as that, whatever you are working, put your heart and soul into that. And Great. if you are if you are a project, do it in a mission mode. The, the concept of ownership, that if you are building a substation, you must own the substation and do all what you can do. And the best person to do is you, no one else. What is your role? Only you can do it, no one else. And you have to find solutions for every problem. Problems are there, but never go to your senior sales for taking with the problem. You go with the problem and two, three alternatives for this solution. What, whatever is acceptable in the collective wisdom, the one to be implemented. And number two is one has to be very, very ethical. Treat your, treat your people with a lot of respect because they are, your success is dependent upon the people whom we are working with. So be very kind, be, get the work done from them, but not with a threat or anything. Be a part of them, be a true leader. If there's a breakdown, you have to be first there. Don't expect that your JE will be there first or your lineman will be there. If there's a breakdown, make immediately effort to reach there as soon as possible. And it's a management by leadership. Only then the people respect you and they do their best. And appreciate Every, every small thing which has been done by anyone because appreciation makes the moral boost and they perform the best under those circumstances. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sparing your valuable time. And friends, I was lucky enough, I was with SR City, sir, who has shared his life journey and the very right epitome of the knowledge, skill management, passion and compassion. He has already expressed and with that, I would like to say thank you once again for your precious time and sharing your stories with Sip. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will tell you one more thing. Confucius was a Chinese philosopher. His famous saying is, purpose of having knowledge is to use it. Use that knowledge and acquire knowledge on a daily basis. The day you stop get, getting knowledge, you are finished. You are 
your death starts on the same day when you stop learning. So learn, learn, learn. Thank you, sir. Thank All you very much. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.